rainy Arizona evening, y'all. Rainy Arizona evening. Beautiful, though. And the Wally World, I call it Ghetto Wally World parking lot. And, uh, let's get into it. Turn that off and see if it'll do better. Yep, Ghetto Wally World. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, y'all, I got a new lid. I know some people say they like to see the lids. Not a new lid. This is a historical, like, Negro League with all the old historical Negro baseball teams on it. And uh, I have to tell the story of when I bought my house in Maricopa. And the builder I went through was D.R. Horton. And the uh, salesperson, not my salesperson, but one of the salespeople wanted to take a friend to go look at the model and everything that I was going to buy. And I did ultimately buy. And he called it a nigger league hat. And I had to file a complaint through Arizona, which did nothing. And through Arizona and through the Horton, I'll never buy one of their homes again after that. I was already in my contractual agreement and the prices were going up, so I did buy the house. Um, and yeah, later lost the house and the whole market crash thing, but it's okay. It just taught me I'd never buy from them. That was probably my stop. That's when you should know to stop. Anyway, I do want to do shout outs in this video. The video part that I'm put up in the that I put up in the beginning was done last night. I stayed at the Wally World parking lot um, last night after going over to uh, Big Lots and picking up some things there. I'm packing up my truck gradually. So today I was supposed to go with Joe and we're going to take stuff to the storage unit. But I said, dude, can I do it tomorrow? I'm going to be packing up quite a few of the clothes, especially the summer clothes off of here, getting some winter clothes on here and any non-essential stuff I'm going to pack up. So that's going to be my focus here. After I leave here, I went and had breakfast at this little place called Jenny G's on 75th Avenue. If you guys are in Arizona, 75th Avenue in Indian School It's over here by this little coinless laundry that I sometimes come to. Um... Anyway, I've been, and it was actually a very good breakfast. It was like 10 bucks. It was, I was a little more because I asked for something special on, a, on my eggs. I had them make it like an omelet. So it cost me about 15, well, 15, 17 with tax. And uh, I mean, I could have just done a $10 breakfast, which is pretty cheap, but I wanted some other stuff. So I'm satisfied. It's like a late breakfast, so I serve breakfast and lunch. I won't have to eat until I have dinner. We're going to be doing some things different on the truck. I'm going to put up at the end some pictures of some new stuff that I got. Now, I can plug in a regular appliance in this truck. The thing is, it doesn't have um, really room for a fridge. I can do like everybody else does. Some people lower the seat and put like a refrigerator up in here. And I I'm not going to do all that. One, because to me, I don't like it because it blocks the window and I like to see. So it's more important for me to see. So what I had to do was I did. So I had to sit down and really think how I can change so my eating habits, because I'm starting to really feel my weight. I'm feeling it bad, feeling it bad. I'm, I'm tired, and on top of that, just walking is a lot. And I gained coming back in the truck, and especially working under this starter company, I've gained a lot more weight, whereas I was losing weight when I was under the little Oklahoma company because I could cook on the truck. And I, if I make stuff, I make it a certain way. I don't. It's weird because even though I'm fat, mainly I think a lot of my weight comes because I've worked nights most of my life. And I ate late at night, so it's not good to do that. Um, so what I did is I actually picked up a Ninja Smoothie Blender. Um, it's like 40-some bucks on Amazon. And I picked up some uh, protein, organic, I think it's organic protein. I'll, the picture will be at the end. Some goji berries. I don't like smoothies that are just you shake them. I'm just like, I like a smoothie that is a smoothie. A smoothie should be frozen and icy. So I go to truck stops all the time. I can pick up ice. I got a cup that holds ice for several hours, so I'm going to do that. And then um, what I do is I'll just stop in, and that will be my breakfast. And I think that's what I'm going to do for dinner and try to do one full meal a day. I can usually get by Walmart at least once a week. So if I want to add stuff in, and then some of the truck stops have fruit, like bananas, apples, and I can cut that up into this particular blender if I want to do that. I picked up the, I'm lactose intolerant, even though I do, do I love cheese. Uh, I love, I love dairy like ice cream. So I do lactose tablets whenever I usually have cheese. Um, but I picked up the almond milk that doesn't have to be refrigerated. It's in a, a carton. It doesn't have to be refrigerated, so I'm going to use that for my smoothie. I picked up the vanilla unsweetened version. And what we're going to try to do, I'm going to try to start with maybe one meal replacement right before I go to bed. 
and that will be a shake and then possibly one in the morning. And then I'm going to the protein or the breakfast bars for breakfast to save myself some money because my goal is to be up out of this company by the end of the year. So all my money I need to start sitting aside. So I did not stay at the hotel this time. I stayed on the truck or I hang up with family members um, because I just, I don't. And so what I'm going to do is uh, hopefully by the end of the year, I can do a 30 day leave, which I can. I know I can do a personal 30 day leave. And then during that time, I'm talking back a with the headhunter, but also I'm talking with other people I know in trucking and I'm making phone calls. So this time what I want to do is have at least three to five companies to choose from and not be so narrowed down to one or two companies that I was looking at. I want to have a good choice. So if one don't work out, I don't have to come back here. I love the driver manager I have, but I just, the, the newbie game stuff, I can't. The three days off, crap, clean your stuff off the truck, and you have to go deal with the freaking jacked up tractor supply. I, I, I can't. I can't. Um, I met a couple that uh, work for Tri-State, which is the ones that are DOD. But it's, I guess there's several companies under the company. That is, and I didn't know Tri-State was here in Arizona. I have some financial government stuff, so some tax stuff that I need to handle, and I don't know if that would be a factor for a DOD background check. But they recommended going over there. She said for every week they're out, they get two days off. They take their truck home. They're home for 10 days. She talked about how they bonus them for safety and other stuff. She said if you're willing, to, if you can find somebody to team where you can really make good money. If I team with somebody, I got to know you like I know myself. And especially after, after uh, dealing with some of the trainees. You got to know somebody's driving habits. You got to know that they're not, they know what the hell they're doing. And because um, otherwise you'd be turned over somewhere. Anyway, um, I do want to do some shout outs. So I know it's possible. I'm looking at, uh, Shy, I'm still looking at your company. Actually, the headhunter was really big about your company being a plus. So we are still looking at your company. I didn't like the insurance plan they have, although I'm familiar with them. We have them here in Arizona. I don't know if they're in, uh, no, they are Texas-based companies, so they probably are Texas. That's my dad if his if that person takes it, and I got to see if my doctor here in Arizona takes it. Um, and I also want to check on their weight loss program because I still want to get the lap band. But I don't want to come out the pocket, and I don't necessarily want to go to Mexico to have my dang lap band surgery done. But anyway, let me go ahead and do my shout-outs because I... This video is going to get into uh, addressing some comments, and then I'm going to be doing a couple other separate videos, uh, one to address uh, something that is going to kind of be a ramble, but y'all might enjoy it. If you don't, you don't. If you do, you do. I mean, it is what it is. It is what a TI is. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk about because I like to talk about stuff. So, shout outs. Um, and I had to write on this, y'all. I wrote on this. Carrie Edwards, thank you for joining the channel and or commenting. And that's what these are, commenting or joining the channel. Don't take offense if I don't mention your comment. I probably replied to the comment. I'm going to say I'm going to try to reply to all comments, but I don't always do that. But sometimes if a comment stands out, like I have one today, and I really want to address it because she's got two questions, and, I, and, I, and her questions are both good. Her concern is really good, too. But, um, and so I'm mean, hers is going to be the one standout comment that I'll be talking about here in a minute. So, Carrie Edwards, thank you for joining the, comment, co the channel and or commenting. Deshaun Taylor, same. Thank you for joining the channel and or commenting. Um, Juan Thompson, you the one talking about Harlem Nights. I, I, I'm old enough, man. I'm 50. <laughs> Do I remember Harlem Nights? My favorite part was the pinky toe part. But, you know, I know you was talking about when I made a little, her stuff must be made out of something. Comment. Uh, Uncommon, 357. Yeah, man, her stuff was made out of something special, bro. Thanks for the comments. Trucking with Jay Dupree, thank you for joining and or commenting. The Black Greek, thank you for joining and or commenting. YV, homie, I ain't heard from you in a while. Thanks for commenting. Lua Shelton, Lua, you actually put something on here in your comments I'm curious about. Lua put on here a safety idea. That he or she had, I don't know if it was a he or she. Um, about motion, I'm presuming Lua sounds more female, so I'm, I'm going to presume it's a female. But Lua, homie, I don't care, female homie or male homie, homie. Um, Lua, homie, you put on here something about motion detector project you're doing in your semi um, from something on Amazon. I'm really curious about that, and I think that... If you can send some more information to me on that, 
you can reach me at truckerdoll at gmail.com. Um, let me know it's you and it's the it's you know it's this project you're working on. Um, I, I'm really curious about that because I think that would be a very good idea and a safety idea um, for for us in this truck. I, that is freaking genius, dog. It's just genius, and dog not in a bad way, in a good way, homie. <laughs> in a good way, like D A W G, like dog, like home, homie, dog, like that's that's that that right there is genius. It's it's actually yeah, I like that. So get us some more information on that, especially for the females. Hell, for anybody in the industry, it, that that's smart. It's like in your house, you have a motion detector, and it sets an alarm off in the truck. That That is genius. I, genius. So please get us some more information on that. Latoya Pruitt, I believe it is. Thank you. A privet. Thank you for joining. Sorry, I, I was scribbling. Cat Eyes 97. Thank you for joining. Miss Chocolate, 344, 394, I think I wrote it on here. Laverne or Levine Blackwell. Her name is Laverne Blackwell. Thank you. J.R. Ryder something. Snyder? I don't know. It's J.R. Ryder. You know who you are. Thank you for joining. Rhonda Richardson. Thank you for joining. Peaceful Journey. I like that name. Thank you for joining. Michael Trey. Uh, Michael Trucking Gray. I think you just left like a, a comment doll and then a smiley face. I guess you thought it was funny. I, I presume that's what that little comment was. Happy and joy. Thanks for leaving the comment. Big Scooter 70403. Deborah Calhoun is who I'm going to be addressing here in a minute. So I want to thank all you guys for joining the channel, joining this channel as well as some of you joined the 411 as well. Um, so Deborah's comments are who I'm really going to be addressing here today. There was one other comment I meant to address. There's uh, another comment on there, and actually get into the persons per mile. Man, who was it? Was it Michael? I can't remember who it is. Somebody asked me, was 30 cents a mile, and let's address that real quick, was 30 cents a mile good, and they started driving in 2016. So let me tell you how I would research it, and I did reply to your comment. But I also want to put that out here for other people who may have that question, because it's a good question. How you determine your value as a trucker, apply to other trucking companies and see who's offering you the most dang money. Bam. And then you can see what the standard is, and not just one. Put your, You can go out onto some of these trucker like uh, jiggy jobs, put it out there, you get a whole bunch of people calling you. How much are you paying per mile? Then you know what your worth is and your range is based on your experience. That answers that question. If your company can't bring you up to that standard, throw them the two fingers and move on and find you another truck and it's paying the right money and treating you right. Ma'am. Okay? Hopefully that answers that question. So, after your year, you should be making more money. When I came back in and I was off the road for five years, they told me, and Deborah, this is going to get into your question about whether they'll put that in writing, and usually, no, they do not. Okay? Um, if you find a company that will put in writing what you're making, then you probably need to run, not walk to that company. Trucking, again, is dirty. They, they, We'll get there in a minute. Um, you got a lot, Deborah. Let me, let me, let me back up for a minute. So this video is gonna be long. I'm just gonna tell you that already because I did the shout out to the beginning. I'm getting ready to get into Deborah's comment. Deborah has two comments. One she put on the 411 page, which I'm gonna address. So this chat, this will actually be on my page. I'm also gonna put on 411. Uh, I might put it on both. I'm gonna put it up probably on the, the YouTube as well as the Facebook channel because I think it's a good question. So Deborah asked the question. The first question was she had watched the video about the young lady who was killed in her truck in the Mardi Gras truck, truck shop, the 25-year-old. Her first concern was about safety. So let's talk about that subject, and then I'm going to come back to the per cent per mile because I can tie that together with the other comment, which I'm going to get to. And I'm also right now truck shopping. So I'm truck company shopping. Okay. So let's deal with that. These are one of my other sets of driving gloves. Um, my, As you guys know, my former background was corporate. So I worked corporate jobs. Most of the times for my corporate jobs, I'm a night shift person. I like nights. I've been a night person 
pretty much all my life. I did entry level work from customer service all the way up into middle management and semi upper middle management in some companies. Um, I always work nights. That was just my preferable shift. The reason is, is probably my personality. I don't like corporate politics. I hate it. And in the daytime, you got a lot of the big wig buttholes walking around the place and behaviors are weird. Everybody's doing weird stuff. Everybody's got their straw up somebody's butt, kissing butt. It's not me. I just want to come in. I want to do my job and I want to go to hell home and I don't want to kiss anybody's butt and I don't want a whole bunch of drama and I just want you to let me do my job and go home because I will work. I, that's, I come from hardworking people. Work ain't a problem for me, okay? I've worked since I was 15, 16 years old, something like that, okay? So I've worked, I worked pretty much most of my life and we only talk about my indentured to my biological mother raising my two brothers and keeping her house clean like a slave. So, I, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> work has never been a problem. And I come from that. I mean, like I said, my two grandmothers, they both were, that movie, The Help, both of my grandmothers did that. You know, cleaning house for, and I hate the word white, for Anglo-Saxon folk. Um, and my grandmother cooked for the, the, the Tiffany family, Tiffany Jewelers. She was their cook. My other grandmother, my father's mother, um, she actually cleaned up for old Anglo white folks at some nursing home and walked there every day cleaning their apartments and their toilets and all that other stuff. And, you know, that's what they come from. So hard work and working folks ain't it ain't, ain't a problem. Even though my mother's special, she's a workaholic. My father, he's special too, but he hard working dude. I mean, he worked on the railroads for years, you know, and... He started out doing, uh, was working in, uh, when he came out to Vietnam, uh, from his Vietnam time, he was working for, uh, uh, what was he doing, Ag Department of Agriculture, and then when his father came down with prostate cancer, he went back and worked on a dairy farm, so he grew up working on a dairy farm, for most of, you know, when he got to acting up, and his mama sent him to his daddy, so both my parents were hardworking people, they weren't, they weren't system people, like, and, I, and I'm not judging folks who have to use the system, but they didn't live. I do have family members who are living on the system on my father's side. They weren't living and manipulating the system. So that's not who they were. Okay. And I come from that. And I'm not, I'm not judging you using the system if you need it. I am judging using the system if you're just lazy. I can't stand lazy folk. I'm fat as hell and lazy is not the thing. Okay. So I work mainly night shifts. And what I'm going to say with that is that I walked out of buildings in the middle of the night into parking structures. Uh, where things can still happen. So even though we talk about the dangers, and yes, you do need to be a little bit more aware because you're in every freaking state. Um, even though we talk about the dangers in trucking, those dangers can be anywhere, okay? Anywhere. Um, that the young lady I talked about, the school teacher who was in Louisiana, I, if I remember correctly, I met her at a Christmas party that my friend threw and then when my friend said, oh, Shannon, you remember she, you met her, I remember her and her sister came. And so I, was like, I couldn't remember. And when I saw her face, I'm like, yeah, she does look familiar. Um, this baby went to work in Louisiana as a school teacher. She went to celebrate with other school teachers after work. The fact that she was teacher of the year, her, people loved her. Something transpired at that bar and grill. Somebody either spiked her drink and she went out to her car not feeling well. Again, this is where wisdom comes in. You there with your homies. Why in the hell did them women let you walk out to your car by yourself? Nah, sis, I'm going to walk out there with you. Okay? We're the barn girl. I don't know that area of the country. Now, she is a California girl. Cali is no joke depending on where you from. And my friend who's friends with that family, she they from Compton. Okay? I don't know where this girl is from, but even we have to be very aware when we go places, I remember when I first started trucking, I'm going to tell y'all a story, and this was based on my ethnicity, okay? I got a load, I was a paper load, it was with Swift Transportation, which was the company. It was a paper load to Mead, the Mead, whatever the paper company is, somewhere in the south. It was Mississippi, Alabama, one of those. When I got done, I was out of hours, I'm in this little hole in the wall town. I don't know nothing about it, but let me tell you my experience at 13. 
My aunt, who I talk about, my mother's sister was married to an Urban League director. For y'all know what Urban League is, it's a civil rights organization. Okay, her husband's an Urban, right, Urban League director. My first time in New Orleans, prior Katrina, I was 13 years old. Okay, we went and visited some of his family and some of our family in the South. It was my first time ever in the South, leaving Arizona. In that, I'd never been out of Arizona other than when I was a little girl and stayed in Ohio, and I don't remember that because I was too too little. And I went to, um, we went to Louisiana, and I was babysitting for my aunt and uncle while they were at the Urban League convention in New Orleans. We stayed at that Hilton downtown New Orleans. Y'all believe me, it should still be there, right off the water, right off the Mississippi, right down from Bourbon Street. We stayed there. We then went and visited other relatives, okay? Of his, of my, my, my uncle that she's married to, and of our family. We stayed in southern areas. One of the houses we stayed at was a cousin of ours on, I think, my aunt's side, on our side. He said, at 6 o'clock, y'all be in this house and don't leave out this house. The clan is still here. The who? I'm from Arizona. Don't get me wrong. We probably have clan in Arizona. We just... If they do, they have a secret meetings. <laughs> I'll be honest. The, this is stuff I'm reading about in books that I thought was gone. I'm 13. That was 1981, 82. Okay? The clan. The who? I know the clan they still existed. I was naive because we didn't. I didn't have a white sheet people in Arizona. I ain't never seen them. If they having clans, they were having it somewhere I didn't know. I grew up in a, I, at this time I was entering in, uh, y'all forgive me, my battery's going down. Hold on, let me get this battery charged. Oh, uh, y'all, let me get the battery so the phone don't die. There we go. Hopefully. Is it, let me make sure this thing is doing what it's supposed to be. Let's hope it don't cut off, y'all. Hold on. The Lord is down. Y'all see the seat over here is a mess because I got laundry and stuff. I got to go through everything. Anyway, back to the story at hand. So, um, where was that in my story? This young lady was out with friends and she was teacher of the year. But nobody walked out there. So when I went down to the south and he basically said the clan, and then also we had watched TV and they were finding black boys' bodies on the side of the road. I, ugh. I, it was culture shock for me. But it left an indelible memory in my mind. So when I came into trucking, the first thing I did, here I am in the South, and the South still has racial divide, which we're going to talk about that in my next video. Because I, I hate the term black. I hate the term white. Uh, when I grew up, one thing I can tell you is that what we say is white was considered Anglo- European males or of male descent, your Anglo European descent, meaning that you were the racial divide thing. We'll get into that in another video, but I hate that we use that term and I hate using the term we're going to talk about it in a minute because I'm not black, my skin is brown. Um, but we, we'll get into that in a whole nother conversation. Anyway, it set something in my spirit to where when I went to the south for the first time and I was stuck out there, the first thing I did was lock all my doors and close the curtains. I, that way you don't know who's in this truck. And I slept there, and then the next morning I woke up, I was by this little, I was at parked in, at this little, it was like a, it, it was no longer functioning, an old like truck stop, like, you know, little one island truck stop where the old back in the day. And there was this little hole in the wall, little country store. When that country store, the people running it, it was Asian run and some black folks that worked for them. So I was okay. But, you know, I don't know what's going on in the middle of the night. I just knew that he said, don't go out there. The clan is still out here. Boom, de boom, de boom. And he had a lot of farmland, but he just, it, it just set something in my spirit. I was like, wow. You know, and that was in 82, 81, 82. And in Arizona, I hadn't experienced that. And not saying Arizona does not have it. Arizona has a more undercover, we have a more undercover racial issue in Arizona. So the discriminatory issue in Arizona is very covert. It's very undercover. Uh, it, that's the racial issue in Arizona. Now, with that being said, let's go further into this. Um, 
I had that's what I want to use for me. I had um learn to be cautious whenever as a truck driver just on that but when I did my research I remember seeing Brenda Trucker 47 I saw a few other Brenda was the only black female well there's one other one that I seen but I don't know what happened to her um she did like a couple videos and you didn't hear from her anymore and then there was the, a white lady named NJ Catwoman and then there was another lady a white lady on there and she told her story and then some of the stuff I had researched uh, one woman I know she had asked, had put in to have somebody come fix her truck. And the guy who came, that they, the company's not to fix her truck, tried to attack her. And she had to physically fight this man. And she had mentioned that on her, on her chat, on her, I think it was in the chat or something. So I had already researched and knew some of what I was coming into. But I also had to step back and use rationality. So here's, here's my rationale for you. I worked a night shift in corporate America in which you could walk out to your car and somebody could hit you in your head. I worked for one company where they, somebody had got shot and killed on our property. It was a domestic situation, but it happens. Okay. I worked for another company where someone committed suicide based on a lot going on and probably some of the treatment of some of the management. We won't even go there. Um, I, I've seen a lot in over, what am I, 50 years old. I've been working since I was... 16 15 16 years old so i'm real 16 16 years old and so from 16 to 50 i've been working and a lot of that 20 years of that has been in corporate in a corporate environment anything can happen in whatever industry yes you have to be probably a little more cognizant sure but there's plenty of women doing this job some who have retired from it who are doing quite well so i'm gonna do that paper To the point of, got the name again. Deborah. Is it Deborah or Deborah? To 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 your point, Calhoun. Um. Thank you for joining, but reality is, crap can happen anywhere in this life. The woman was a school teacher. She went out to celebrate with friends. They found her in a car, half undressed, and which she's a beautiful girl, beautiful. I put the link on the other video so you can go read and watch that article. It was on national news for a minute. Never called who did whatever to that baby. At least her mama got her body back, okay? The world we live in is, is, is bizarre. I mean, even just watching the trial that took place, I'm calling it a trial or the in interrogation of, of two of a prominent, quote unquote, to be possible judge and this lady who was more than obvious victim. I'm not buying the bull. I personally think he was crying in line. Okay. I'm crying in line in order to twist things to the American sympathy. I think his stuff was written for him. And being that it sounded like something from a three year old, it probably came from the guy, the big guy on top. <laughs> And if it is from him, that's already scary because he shouldn't be a judge because he's acting like a three-year-old and sounded, do you like beer? I mean, it's crazy as hell. What's even more twisted, if you really want to think about the thought process of our world, is there are females who basically have said, well, that's what 17-year-old boys do. You have a daughter and you want to tell me that you think it's okay for your daughter, for your daughter to be groped, held down, attempted rape by a 17-year-old boy. Something in hell is wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. And I have no comment and that's normal. It's not normal. It's crazy as hell. Okay. And it says something about that behavior. And that ain't his first mode rodeo. I already know it ain't. We are in a different world. And especially under, I hate to say, under a new generation of humans. They, I call them noids. Humanoids. They're annoying noids. These folks are really twisted off the cap. 
we've got a very sexually perverse society. I'm sorry. It, it The stuff I'm seeing now is just mind-numbing. I'm seeing some stuff that, that that's how I feel about it. Like, what the hell? There's nothing left to the imagination. <laughs> it's nothing. So, when, and I'm not trying to be mean, there's just nothing. Everything right now is to me very bizarre. Out here, folks are weird. Even from some of the people I had on here as trainees, which is why I won't train no more. I don't care what company it is. I'm good. I don't want to train nothing. Nothing. Only thing I want to train is a dog who's going to be on this truck with me. This can happen in any industry. Granted, yes, here you need to be more cautious. You really, really do. Um, you know, there's women who are female guards in prison who could be raped, attacked. There's men who are guards who could be attacked, beat up. I have a brother who's a guard in a prison. I had a friend who did teaching in a prison. We had a teacher out here or something. She thinks she was teaching or something like that and was raped in a prison because something fell through with a security detail that was supposed to be there while she was teaching and she was raped by one of the prisoners. <sighs> This stuff can happen anywhere. It really can. You need to take the safety precautions because they're just fools out here in this world. That's just 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 the honesty of it. Um, it it's just it's honesty, and I don't know what your biblical background is, but the Bible says basically our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. It's spirits in the background that basically whatever a person's mindset is, it kind of helps to work on that, and they go cuckoo. So. I believe we need to be very cautious and very cognizant of what's around us at all times. Even right here in my home state of Arizona, like I said, my cousin was killed in his truck. My grandfather was shot and killed in his in a place of business that he ran for years um, with no issues ever. They always had people, everybody and their mother knew. That was a little social club where everybody had played bingo and piquino. Everybody and the mama knew. Everybody. Turn the air up a little bit. Nobody was shocked about it. It's what was done. And some kids came in there. They were drug users. Uh, these were, these were I mean, young. When I say kids, I think they were like 17 and older. And, you know, basically, they emptied the guy, kid, and emptied the drug out. Emptied the gun in my grandfather. When my grandfather real what's about to happen, he had a gun on him, he shot him in the leg. That's how that's how they caught him. Is how my grandfather did get a shot off. And he shot the kid in his leg before he hit the ground. When he, my grandfather realized what was gonna happen. The kid emptied the entire gun in my grandfather. Something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with our society. And that was I was in my twenties. It's like twenty twenty five ish. Our world is sick. We got a lot of problems in this world that we're in. And it's it's not the same world we were in before. Number one. It's a lot of messed up people in this world. And if you're gonna be teaming with your husband, then I think you're better off. Hey, the money is good. As a team, you guys can make substantial money out here in this industry if you and your husband are doing it together. And, you know, he just needs to be, he should already be taking precautions for himself if he's an existing driver. Because even a man, you know, you, there's times you might have to defend yourself. There was a driver who was killed. He was, it, actually, I think it was Louisiana. He was delivering a load. I'm going to see if I can find that article. He was delivering a load in Louisiana. He was parked in front of the customer. Like it's like a grocery store or something like that or a store. Something was wrong with his truck, and he got out to fix his truck, and some dude came up and killed him. Okay? Killed him, and I think, I even remember the guy was robbed, but the kid was just wanting to kill somebody. Killed him right out in, in, in the middle, but he was out there in the middle of the night. Again, that's not wise. Why in the hell? Look, this truck break down in the middle of the night, I'm going to send a message. Lock the doors and close the curtains. And until the person coming to fix the truck gets here, I'm in the truck locked up like Chuck. I'm not getting out there to fix nothing. I've had situations in the middle of the night where I needed to, to slide the tandems, park the truck. Unless I'm at a truck stop, 
I'm not doing that in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to park that damn truck and go to sleep. Or I'm going to go to the truck stop in the light of something and do all that. People, you got to use wisdom. You just got to use wisdom. Um, you got to, you got to use wisdom. You, you just got to use wisdom. Um, so I would not, for me, I still came in the industry even knowing some of the possibilities. I came in it because I needed something different. I, I was tired of the corporate life. I was tired of the drama. I was tired of, they used to call it the management concerted front where you're going to get up here and you're going to support an asshole who treats people like assholes. And it always concerned me that one day y'all going to piss off the wrong person and come here and shoot up a whole bunch of people and I'm going to be in the way. And I wasn't trying to treat, I tried to treat my people like people. That's one of the, the worst things with America right now. And everybody wants to get up here and sit up at these truck stops and listen to these Anglo-European white truckers talk about how they love this president and he's doing a fabulous job because he's doing what they want and, and, and they like their racist, racial racist banter. And I listen to them and I'm like, I can't. You know, you I can't support the behavior of assholes. I, I just can't. And you treating people inhuman and treating them like they dogs and treating them like they less than. I, I just, I, I can't. I, I just, I freaking can't. I just can't. So, you know, I, I came out because one thing I liked about trucking, and I don't make, I, you know, probably don't make nearly what I can make in this industry or what I can make probably. Um, you can't make good money, which is what I'm trying to position myself for. I'm doing okay. I'm not making what I can make. Um because I'm 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 not I'm not gonna be out here tired. I'm not gonna be out here like I was late on a load that I had and I let them know the reason why I was weathered, they're not gonna pay me the detention pay for it. I'm not gonna argue with you because our time is coming to an end anyway. <laughs> Soon as God opens the door, I'm gonna boom, I'm out. You know, me and the starter company stuff is done. Um Again, I don't think they're a bad company. I think they're a great company to start at. I just don't think they're a long-term company. Not unless you can change some of your behaviors, and they're not going to change those behaviors. They're trying to get long-term drivers, and I think they're losing them right out the door. Actually, I know for a fact because I've met some of the drivers who have left. And uh, in, in part of this, cleaning off the truck and every three days, and if your truck gets up in the shop and it has problems. I met a couple when I was working for this little no-name company out in Oklahoma. I met them and they had just left and gone to some other little smaller company because they said we got tired of, of having to switch our trucks out all the time. Uh, you know, A, I couldn't make the money I could make, and I know I can make money somewhere else and get a decent piece of equipment. If I got to drive a used piece of crap, I'd rather drive a used piece of crap and make money under somebody else where at least I'm getting a better check. Um, and or I don't have to be moving my stuff off of the damn truck every three to four days. Or if I decide to do this, that, or the other thing, or the truck ends up in the shop past three to four days, and then I got to go into another truck, and you give me another piece of shit truck to run in until it breaks down, or you pull it in the shop, and you tell me it's got warranty, and then I got to get on my. He said, I got tired of that. But you can do okay out here. You just need to take safety precautions, as you would from any job. If you don't believe me, um, a good a good lady, I think, uh, was it Jay Rich? She did a video about the young lady, too. And I liked the way I thought her thought process and just some of her no nonsense conversation to the youth. And you know, I like the way she said, she said, said that baby was living her best life. She she made some choices to the young lady. God bless her. And I'm not saying she's at fault for her death, but I think that some of her, some of the choices might have had that baby still here. The person that fought is the person that killed her. But. Maybe has she done some wiser choices in some of the, of the decisions she's made, um, she would still be here with us. And I and I think it's Miss Diva, whatever. I think it's Tamara. I think, I think you left a comment too. Thank you for watching. Um, regarding, she's the one who did the video about the KLLM and the funeral and stuff like that. Um, she also and I went back to her original video regarding uh, Kamisha, and uh, she she also stated that you know some people haven't been outside 
of where they grew up. So I don't know how sheltered this young lady was. I was a pretty sheltered kid, you know, other than abuses going on in my house. But when I went to that Urban League convention and we went and went to those different places in the South and I saw what I thought was history and it was still active. Um, and and when I, when I sensed racism for the first time, I grew up on both sides of the track. I grew up in, in the in a predominantly black neighborhood for the young part of my life when my mother was closer to her family because the fam because we grew up in a pretty much the area my grandfather's homes were in that he rented were in black and latino communities um and then when we moved and i started going to school in predominantly my mother kept us in predominantly white schools because she felt the educational standards were better and i agree but when we moved and i started going to those schools and i started i didn't understand racism I, I just didn't understand that and so you you got to see that on a different level and you got to see different treatments it's the same thing with rape and any kind of sexual crime or any kind of crime to murder somebody or hate crimes and we you know how males look at females and, and I say male opposed to a man, I don't see a man will rape a woman, but a male, a grown male will. Because a, a man will respect a female. He will respect a woman. Um, a grown woman will respect a man. But when you get into God, it's showing me the difference between a male and a female. And a male doesn't, a grown male can just be some perv who just sees body parts. And that's all they see. They don't see the human being. They don't see the person. So a grown, pervy, crazy ass male can go and murder some woman in her in her in her and have very little remorse, if any. You know, same they can go and just screw them and go screw five million other females and have no cognizant. I don't really care. It's just it's a body part to me, and I just want to get my rocks off and have no feelings, no love no nothing i just it, that's a grown male that's not a that's not a grown man a man looks for a woman and a woman looks for a man and those things you're looking for an adult who brings to the table what compliments you and what can you bring to the table what compliments them so that you guys can be a couple and hopefully get married and have family and whatever um all the rest of that some just sexual crap <laughs> and and we have a very sexually driven world. So, uh, and to your point, do I think you know you should use this situation, use the situation to gain wisdom, and then if you're going to come into the industry, come into the industry knowing the game. Now you are asking the right questions. One is about your safety, top notch. You need to look at all safety precautions possible phenomenal idea that the, the woman has with the motion detectors in the truck. I was like, that's genius. There are truckers who have, because a lot of them are least purchased, but they have uh, drive cams in the front, but they have a whole camera system all the way around their truck. And genius. Okay? Genius. I watched, what's her name? Tiffany Hanna. And she had bought a, a drive cam kit. She's with uh, Prime. She got a drive. And I, was, I thought it was funny at first. I was like, you gonna try to put all that on your truck? <laughs> all this, all these cameras in your truck, but then when you hear about this baby, it's a genius. He's genius because she's also looking at protection of her equipment, but also if something ever happens, she got video footage of anybody stepping up to her crap. This is like our little home on wheels. That's just it's our home away from home on wheels. It's what it is. I, I want to own a uh, RV. I would love to own an Airstream. And I was watching some Airstream videos. And one of them, the guy had, he had cameras on the back, on the side. And genius. Because that is his home away from home. He's protecting himself. Okay. To your question about the cents per miles. I have not worked at but maybe two companies that ever sent me anything in writing on what I was going to make per mile. One of them was Conway, which is now CFI. And the other one, Conway was one. I think the little hole in the wall. I think, did they send me anything? I think they did. I can't remember. But I think they sent me something by email. Those two companies were the only two companies that ever sent me anything in writing on what I was coming in the door sent per mile. 
my current company, they told me I was going to work one thing through the recruiter. And when I got here, it turned into a whole other thing. I did not make what they told me I was going to make. I'm making about 44 cents a mile with five years experience. Honestly, though, per trucker Bill and uh, Jose, JC Elect, they said I can probably make up to 50 cents a mile with my experience because I have no accidents and no incidents on my record. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm shopping right now. So I don't know. Within the next few months, I'm going to be somewhere the hell else. I know that. Today, I kind of got irritated today because they didn't pay me for a detention pay, but it's okay. I'm not going to argue with you over $50, $60. I'm not going to argue with you over that. You just pay me for what you do, and then I'm going to run until I run, put my money away, and then me and you going to... And like I said, prayerfully I can get a company where I can get a decent truck, have a refrigerator, a microwave. I have one young lady who's here in Arizona. She came with her own authority, and she did offer me a position. She's um, she's going to have an extra truck, and she 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 was really, she reached out to me, and I was very kind. I would be a 1099 gig, and I don't I just if I do 1099, I want to do 1099 where I'm buying my own truck. I don't want to do 1099 where I'm working for somebody as an employee. So that's just me. I know there's other people do it because there's a freedom to it. But for me, if I'm doing a 1099 and have to deal with all the tax consequences of 1099, I want to do that where I'm purchasing the truck. That means I have my LLC and or S or C Corp set up, uh, EIN set up, and I'm getting all the tax benefits of that. So, And I understand she's doing her business and she's, she's trying to make it, and I get that. I'm honored that she actually contacted me. Uh, to offer me a position because that's that's just says that says a lot about what she's read about my character so I really you know was really complimented by that thank you Nikki um so persons per mile I very few companies do it the recruiter will tell you one thing you'll get in the door and it'll be another you can ask the recruiter to see if they'll put it in writing I I have not seen that done like I said the only companies that ever did confirmation to me was the company out of Oklahoma as well as Conway if you are looking to go to a starter company or to start up, I don't know if you're going to them for your training or if you're going to a trucking school. If you're going to a trucking school, which I recommend, it is it's financially it costs a little bit more, but also check in the grants. I don't know what your financial situation is. If you go to your local employment office, they have, if you're starting a career, there's some kind of grant that they were given out to help you, if not pay for all of the cost of trucking school. And um, since there's such a huge shortage, that should be an option that might be available to you. Um, if you go to trucking school, which is what I recommend, and research the trucking school, make sure it's a good trucking school. Because there's still some crappy trucking schools out here, okay? Get yourself into a trucking school, and then once you're done, if you do well in it, apply to several companies. But one of the ones I would try for is CFI. It is formerly Conway. Um, I'm going to say the company itself, I worked for when they were calling a good company. I didn't like my driver manager, but I didn't handle it good because I was new to the industry. What I should have did was ask for a different driver manager. That's what I should have done. And I didn't do that. Um, I should have went to a different fleet. Um, that's what I should have done. The only thing that really has me here at this company, I like the, I like the driver manager team. But I don't like a lot of where the company is going right now. Under the merger, they've gotten rid of a lot of people. Uh, we used to have a sim class, which I hated. I think it's good for a new driver, somebody with one to two years experience. But after that, I don't think that sim class is out the door. Um, they've gotten rid of a lot of the safety people. They're now requiring the driver managers or fleet managers to handle safety stuff. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. The, they've streamlined the uh, maintenance people. So even when you go in, it's half that stuff to the trailers as far as checking them i'm good <laughs> i'm so good um they don't check the trucks they're regular corporate company trucks if you find it cool if you don't cool um i mean i picked up one that was the, the reefer smelled like it was gonna catch on fire i'll be honest i, I so i always keep but you always be watching y'all mirrors people so maintenance of equipment is horrid right now and i know that they are trying to clean up a lot of things They've lost drivers. They're throwing money at the drivers, but throwing money at me and not letting me live my life or enjoy my life and expect me to be out now. That you can throw all the money you want. I want both. I need money and I need good treatment. And at this point, with the shortage in America, if you can't give me that, I can be local. So, and if because if I have to put up with crap every day, I might as well be in my own bed every day. And I can be local, just driving and delivering something locally. 
So, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, matter of fact, the people I stayed with where I fractured my ankle, she said she was talking to a friend of hers who's working for the local city out here for city bus system doing a lot of the, we call it dollar ride. It's where they go pick up people who are handicapped or elderly. And there, that lady getting thirty dollars an hour. She said, she said, she said she getting thirty, and it's union. And yes, I could go there. Um, I don't have a vehicle right now. I'm gonna be saving up for that as well. But that is obviously another option. I wanted to leave Arizona. I wanted to go somewhere else. I didn't really want to stay here. I want some land. I want a small house. I want to be able to garden. I don't want to have to rent anymore. I want to purchase my land. I want to buy my house. Um, I've been through the gentrification thing where you're in a nice old complex and you ain't paying that much rent and you got nice little old neighbors and the next thing you know they kick you out and they raise the rent four or five times the cost that you were paying. I don't want to go through that. I want to own my dirt. I want to own my tiny house. <laughs> but, um, and I've done a little ramble here, but yeah, you can, the cents per mile, you need, if you can get into writing, good luck. Not all of them do that. And like, the recruiter may tell you one thing, when you get in the door, it may be another. Um, I would verify that. And if you can get it in writing, great. Then you have something where they're going to have to meet those standards. But trucking is unlike a lot of industries. They get away with a lot up until they get sued. And it, it, it's got its ups and downs. Again, I think you're teaming with your husband. I didn't even ask that. I presumed it. So if you're teaming with him, I think safety-wise, you're in better shape than most women. Because as long as it's two of you on the truck, you have less less issues uh, to be, I'm not saying not to be concerned about, but it's it's safer. There's safety in numbers. That I'm saying there's safety in numbers. It's safety in numbers. People are, are less likely to try a couple than they are to try uh, an individual. And that's not always true, but usually that's true. So... You know, you just want to be careful. I went to uh, my license for ministries out of the AME, okay? And I remember the story of a couple that was there. They had gotten married and went to, I think it was Jamaica or whatever. And the husband, they were held at gunpoint, and the husband was killed during a robbery in Jamaica. So, again, I don't know where they were at. You're in, in an area that you didn't come up in, you didn't grow up in, whether you're on vacation. There's, we just have to be cognizant of some things we have to be smart of things even when we drive this roadway there's times i'm driving out here on the roadway and what was once something may be something else i've come up on roadways the whole road is gone i remember driving a u.s highway and they had a veer sign in the in the, 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 the part of the road there was a hole like i guess they, they had a, a sinkhole and we had to go and they had to let one lane go by you know had you been going the right speed not paying attention you have a bad damn day we have to be aware of everything from even when we drive out here to surroundings. So don't let that dissuade you from doing this. It is an interesting job. So again, I don't know. I would need to know a little bit more, Deborah, about what your plans are. Are you just coming out here on your own? Or are you coming out here to be a partner with your husband? If you're coming out here on your own, yeah, don't let it dissuade you, but know what you're getting into. Um, know what safety precautions to take a little dog and i just posted his video he did a video which was phenomenal and it, it, he was preaching basically he basically told him he said you know you the truck stops and he, he has a point you guys make billions of dollars off of us and he was in, here in phoenix he said he was at the uh i think the pilot flying j over off uh 60th 67 67 65th avenue and the freeway and he was over there and he said when he went inside, the only security they had was inside the truck stop. They didn't have anybody driving the lot. And that's not a big lot, but they didn't have anybody. And his point is well taken. He, you don't have anybody out here protecting this lot, yet we, we, we pay you billions of dollars. You should have somebody driving this lot. And the only lot I've ever been to where there is security that drives the lot is the Petro in Ontario. I think the TA may do it too, but I never, I don't stay on that side that much. I stay on the petrol side because I like it better. And probably because I do see the security there, it is paid for parking. And I see, and it's just usually less drama there. The other one, I see a lot more lot lizards at when I was over there. So I don't normally stay there. Plus, they don't have a restaurant. They have all fast. Well, does the TA have a, it might have a restaurant. I can't remember. It, I think it may have a restaurant. I just don't like it. So I go to the petrol. I, they had because I, when I had Hillary on the truck, my dog. They had they have a dog friendly area. I just like the way it's set up better. 
and I like the it's, it's surrounded by the fence it's not as open and they do I do see the security drive that lot it's just it's just a better better lot to me so you have to be cognizant I mean if you go to Chicago and, and again I've been blessed because I had trucker bill um, as one of my mentors I had Kim, Slim Kim and they basically Bill really warned me right off the bat he you know he was just very blatant about protection for women when he met up with me when I first started driving he gave me a tire thumper and he said it's not only for thumping the tires you know he, he showed me you can use this to thump folks in the head <laughs> basically he didn't say it but he demonstrated it so he used kind of like that father mode um of if I was his daughter you know the kind of dad mode and and did that so yeah anyway this is this video I'm gonna put this up in a minute I'll be doing another video here in a moment that video is going to deal with race and I'm gonna talk about that and it's actually I'm doing that for my boy Mike um y'all gonna see the end some of the the, the I'll call it the haul and we'll be talking about the shakes and stuff I also got a toaster oven I can plug in here I might be able to cook a few things but I'm gonna try to move back to some things and I'll show y'all what I'm gonna do it's not going to be anything huge or big. It's going to be the best I can do in my situation until I get the hell out this truck. Uh, work with the headhunter between lease purchase and regular company positions. I want a reefer company. I don't. I like reefer. Reefer's my thing. I, I'm not. I don't like driving in. It's just I, I hate driving in. Unless it's probably a lot of drop and hook. I don't want to be crawled up in no van sweeping shit out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless I can drop and hook. I don't want nothing else other than do with it. Other than that. I'm not sweeping nothing out. I'm not. Drop, hook, or swap. That's it. That's all I ever want to do with a drive-in. I don't want nothing to do with a drive-in other than that. And you better be paying me close to what I'm making for reefer. Um, 30 cents a mile. I think somebody asked me about that. I think that's low in today's that today's age. But I do understand that. Um, I think it's low for today's, today's age to be making 30 cents a mile. Even for newbies. I know back in uh, 2010 when I came in, it was 26 cents a mile with Swift and Werner, which again wasn't really any money. Uh, 30 cents a mile really isn't that much. I make 44 cents a mile when I came back in. They told me I was only making 30, 38, and they had me only making 34. Um, at this stage, you want to pay. You want you want drivers. You got to pay more money. There are jobs out here right now for people, so you can get work in other industries and be home every night. And if you're going to make chump change, you can make chump change and be in your own, your own place sleeping. Home every night, hanging with your family, your friends, going to the movies, you know, having a normal life. Um, not taking the risk, that transportation risk. If you want to come in this industry, another area to look is going to train. Going, going to, if you can get on with the train companies, which they also have a huge shortage right now, like BNSF Railroad, Santa Fe, they're a union. They pay very good money, but it is a very dangerous job. Uh, you got to be physically fit for that job because you got to be able to see, you got to be able to crawl up, you, you, you know, you got to be in shape. It's, it's that, otherwise, if I was in better shape, that's really what I'd be doing. My father was bringing home anywhere from sixty to a hundred plus thousand a year, okay, depending on what he did. If he was over the road, it was over a hundred thousand a year, individual, one person. And he's also when he wanted to be home, I think he's making over sixty to eighty thousand a year. And he, when, as he got older. And he also trained. He, he did. He trained a lot of people. So he trained a lot of guys. Um, you know, he did train. I don't know if he got paid extra for that, but he did a lot of trainees. I didn't know he trained until he started talking about it. So there's there's good money in there, and uh, there's different positions you can get. Uh, his buddy Nick was an engineer. When I go back to Lubbock, we'll see if we can interview Nick. I've always wanted to interview Nick. Nick was an engineer, and uh, Nick also was a Vietnam vet. Nick actually fought in the war. My father served on the base in Germany driving people around because he's an only son, but Nick actually physically fought. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Anyway, y'all, I didn't mean to make this long. I'm starting to ramble. Two and two, the next video I'm going to do is going to be uh, dealing with some racial issues uh, in lieu of a lot of going on right now and my definition and view of race because I'm – I'm really turned off by the word race. I don't I don't like the way we use it and we use it in such it, it it's old and it's outdated. And really we should be talking ethnicity and not race. Race is a human race. But we'll get into that later. Anyway, I hope that answers the questions. I think it's either Deborah or Deborah. I hope that answers the questions for you. I'll be posting this on both the, the 411 channel as well as uh my channel. 
and on our Facebook page to respond to your question. Um, and uh, there's another person who put on here, so hopefully you'll be watching this and answer the percent per mile. But safety, I wouldn't let that I wouldn't let that stop you because you can have unsafe situations even in a corporate job. Like I said, I used to walk out at night and we had security at night. Sometimes I would walk you to your car because of the areas and where we were at. And it is what it is. So, two and two, y'all be blessed.